You know, some people come into Frank's office sometimes and they say, hey, uh, what about dividend investing? My father or my grandfather was a big believer in dividend stocks. Is that a good retirement strategy? We're going to ask Frank that question so you can hear the answer on today's show. Welcome to the Time Blueprint with Frank Oliver of Oliver Asset Management. Here we break down taxes, income, money, and estate planning giving you the tools to make informed financial decisions and aim for better retirement outcomes. Your host is financial advisor, Frank Oliver, the president and founder of Oliver Asset Management. He's the author of Your Time Is Now, sharing the essentials you need to know to craft a comprehensive and customized retirement plan. Dive in with us as we offer clear strategies and straightforward advice, all designed to empower you in your financial journey. Welcome to the Time Blueprint. All right, Frank, so it's a pretty simple question for you today. Is living off of dividends sure. a solid retirement income strategy? It is a, it is a retirement income strategy. Um, I'm not convinced that it should be your entire retirement income strategy. Um, hopefully this doesn't, you know, happen in our investing lifetime again, but, you know, you never say never, so. Um, back in 2008, there were a lot of companies during that great recession that, that, uh, cut their dividends and, and ceased dividends. Sure. Uh, General Motors for the first time in history, um, from when they started paying dividends, uh, mm. quit paying dividends. Um, it is not a risk free strategy by any means. No, it, it absolutely is not. And, um, companies that pay the highest dividends, um, are doing that obviously, you know, to attract investors, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the, that asset is growing as well. So. For example, I, I won't use any names of companies, but there's some, there's some dividends out there that we've seen that are paying six, seven, eight percent, but the underlying value of that asset has declined substantially over the last 10 years. Okay. So, um, I, I'm not opposed to dividend investing. We have to be careful with that. So I have seen, you know, like I look at it as, um, let's say you're a landlord. Okay. Well, let's say that, um, so you have an investment property and it's just not in the best area, right? Um, but your tenants are great. You know, you increase the rent re by 3% a year. They're fine with that because they get a 3% raise every year. They love the area. Their friends all live right there. Uh, but it's just not the best area. So you're getting really good rent, which is a dividend. But that area just doesn't command a good, you know, it's not a quality enough area that the the value of that house is going to continue to appreciate. Okay. So unfortunately, in that area, that house is depreciating. But you're getting that really good dividend, right? Okay. But at the, at the you know, if you want to sell the house in 10, 15, 20 years, you know, you probably have made a lot less on that asset versus having, you know, an asset that appreciated and you could also, you know, receive a, a fair amount of rent as well. So you want to be careful on dividends that, that the quality of that asset is, is appreciating and not depreciating and you're just relying on that dividend. And again, they can cut the dividend. So uh, we do struggle with that a little bit when folks want pure dividend plays because again, you don't want that asset to, to depreciate. But um, we do have some managers that will screen the entire S&P 500. And they'll pull out the best companies, uh, best 22 companies, 20, 25 companies that they feel um, have a solid dividend. But their strategy is it's called a dividend grower. And we feel that's maybe a much better strategy. Mm -hmm. So so in essence, what happens is they're looking for a company that doesn't pay the biggest dividend because that doesn't mean that asset's growing. Right? So looking for a company that increases their dividend. So then the trajectory growth of that asset always, not always, but that that should grow for you as well. So the dividend should increase. It's a dividend growing company, right? Um, but having a modest dividend that grows means that that company's on a growth trajectory as well. So that, that asset is also growing for you. So a little bit of a double win. So not a bad strategy to have dividends. You just want to make sure that that underlying asset's not depreciating because they're paying a good dividend. That's very cool. So the, the key takeaway for me is that it's, it's not the whole strategy, but it can be part of. It can definitely be part of a strategy. And, and if the asset value declines and you get the dividend, that actually kind of stabilizes that, that, that value a little bit, I guess. If it yeah. went down by 2%, you got a 2% dividend, then essentially it kind of sure. protected the, the, I don't know if it protected the value of that asset, but you're still in net zero and no loss. Yeah. Are there tax yeah. considerations with dividends too? Does it mess up somebody's tax situation or make that more complicated or? It or does. Like it does. You got qualified dividends and non-qualified dividends. And people get really confused on that and they're taxed yeah. differently, especially a non-qualified dividend. You know, that's going to be taxed as ordinary income in a lot of situations. Um, we had a client that was living heavily off of IRA distributions and dividends from their non-qualified accounts. And we changed their entire investment strategy and their income strategy. And they're in a low enough tax bracket 
that they can pull the capital appreciation, which they have a significant amount of in their non-qualified brokerage accounts. And if your income level is below a certain threshold, you don't pay capital gains tax. So we're able to produce the same amount of income, pay no capital gains tax, reinvest their dividend paying stocks in their non-qualified account into a different area. The dividend paying stocks we put in their IRA, because those dividends are coming in, they're still tax sheltered, they're still tax deferred. Right? Okay. So that way they're not being taxed on that dividend that they don't need. It's still staying in that tax deferred wrapper, you know, tax deferred shelter, if you will. And then we're just um, living off the capital gains right now while the markets are good. And I think we, we saved them 10 or $15,000 a year in taxes by readjusting that, that strategy. So very cool. Yeah, not opposed to dividends, but just um, definitely want to be careful on the, um, you know, watching the value of that asset. Um, and in this day and age, there are, you know, there are so many, there's so many inventive ways. And I don't mean that in a bad way, like we're inventing something that may not work, but there are some financial tools out there that have been around for a very, very long time that it's about $500 billion in some of these structured products in America right now. And they're paying, you know, in most cases, significantly more than, than fixed income or dividend paying stocks. And they have a much greater degree of safety built into them as well. So I think there's some financial strategies out there right now that are actually much better than than dividend paying stocks if you're going to rely on that exclusively for income. Okay, very so good. Income. If you have a question about dividend paying, you know, stocks and strategies like that or some other preconceived notion about how you should plan for retirement, but you're not 100% sure if it's going to get you to and through all the ups and downs of retirement, always helps to go through the financial planning process. And you can actually do that for free with Frank and his team. They offer a complimentary review and in-person meeting at the office in Longmont, Colorado, or via Zoom from wherever you are. You can learn how taxes, income planning, uh, cash, money, and estate planning, all of those different elements fit into your plan. Uh, you can book a free 30-minute strategy session with Frank Oliver um, by going to our free online calendar. Uh, it's hassle-free, very easy to use. Just check for the link in the description of today's show, and you can book from your smartphone or computer uh, that conversation with Frank and go through an initial planning meeting with Frank to see if you'd be a good fit to meet with one another. So check that out. If that's of interest to you, click the link in the description of today's show to book your free consultation. Frank, thanks for the help. Thank you, Walter. We'll see everybody next time. Right back here on the Todd Blueprint. Bye. Advisory services offered through Creative One Wealth, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Creative One Wealth, LLC, and Oliver Asset Management are unaffiliated entities. Licensed insurance professional. Respond and learn how financial products, including life insurance and annuities, can be used in various planning strategies for retirement. The information contained herein is based on our understanding of current tax law. The tax and legislative information may be subject to change and different interpretations. We recommend that you seek professional tax advice for applicability to your personal situation.